Did you see what his caption on Instagram was today? No. Could be as good as Springbank if they stop chill filtering. Yeah. <laughs> Who called Ben Rama Springbank? Us. Right. Right? Yeah. So, for sure he saw that. He's like, well, wait, gentlemen. <laughs> hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Ramp podcast. It's a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Ramp podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Rob. And tonight, we have been treating ourselves on the podcast. I don't know if this is necessarily a treat or not. More of maybe... Uh, challenge, a challenge per se. A challenge, definitely right? Let's a challenge. call it, this is a challenge. Although I've been to some bars recently where this would be an upgrade. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's been yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're doing the Johnny Walker core range lineup, um, the main seven. Yeah. Um, this was something that was commented a lot on my Johnny Walker review. Yeah. Um, that video now over three years old, or about three years old. Almost 2 million views. Almost 2 million views. That's yeah, 1.85 million or something like that and climbing. Um, yeah, insane. Yeah, absolutely insane. A lot of people were like, what did you do to that video to like get it in the algorithm? I'm like, nothing. I don't know. I just <laughs> like, I just made it just like I do every other video and just tagged Johnny Walker and yeah, it just yeah. somehow found its way into the yeah. magic of the algorithm and just, it went, it went crazy. Yeah, it went matrix. I mean... Johnny Walker is probably the most recognized name in whiskey outside of Jack Daniels, I'd say. I would, I think it's the most consumed whiskey in the world, if I would I'm not mistaken. So. Yeah, like, and probably. I think a lot of that is thanks to uh, India. To oh, yeah. The, the market there is huge for for Jack or for Johnny Walker. Um, yeah. Absolutely insane. Yeah, I, I think um, the stats are, like, staggering when it comes to, like, who's consuming the majority of Johnny Walker and, like... Mm-hmm. It's like sixty percent India, yeah, or something around, along those lines. I mean, I'm I'm making up numbers right now, but it's it's high, and honestly, it is good stuff. Like, what is this? It's something you can consume regularly, lower ABV, so it's like a pour and play kind of whiskey. You know what I mean? And you have your range of value. Like, if you want something cheap, you go with the red. If you want something more classy a little higher end you go with the blue right yeah i think there is a whiskey in here for for any whiskey drinker yeah. um you can have your pins on johnny walker and if you <laughs> scroll through the comments on that video you know upwards of 3800 comments um ranging yeah. really wide from <laughs> you know people like oh yeah great video to you know Fuck this idiot. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> You're drunk, bro. Oh, dude. I had to defend myself like that I wasn't drunk in this video. Uh, yeah. There were I mean, some hilarious comments about people thinking I was super wasted. Um, we're going to get to the comments at some point in we'll this video. Yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk to you about some comments because like, there's some gems in there for sure. For sure. But uh, one of the main comments was, you should do this blind. You yeah. should do this blind because there's biases when you're tasting these whiskeys, obviously, you know, you can see by just the levels of the bottles, how they go up in the range, yeah. just the height and the stature. The height of the bottle, yeah. Right? Not, the, not the level of the liquid inside because the level in the, of the liquid, we should address this because this was a comment at one point, the level of the liquid inside is just based on when you bought the bottle. Oh, a lot of people thought like, oh, the black label and the blue label are the ones that you've drank the most. So those obviously are your favorites. Right. I'm like, no guys, I didn't, buy these all at the same time and open them all it's like i've just had these bottles for longer exactly that was just didn't blew their mind yeah they had no concept <laughs> yeah of, because of everybody that. buys the whole core range <laughs> of whiskeys right at one in one shot right. and then consumes yeah. them at their leisure yeah so anyway a lot of people were like you should do this blind because there's biases which sure and i think my defense was okay yeah sure i could do it blind but at the same time, like, I think I'm going to be able to kind of tell what some of these are. So doing a blind isn't really necessarily 100% going to eliminate all the biases. Well, I think they can rely on which one I like the best because, honestly, other than the green and the double black, I really haven't purchased a single one of these bottles. Yeah. <laughs> really, that, these are the only two that I've actually purchased. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will be – I'm interested to know which one I like best because yeah. – 
This is truly a blind tasting for me. I'm going to try to guess which one's which, but I'm going to fail miserably. I already know. These bottles have been collecting dust for three years. I have not touched these. Maybe outside of maybe a little bit of the blue that I maybe shared with some people. Yeah. The double black, I think I maybe went to a couple times. But, like, these have been, the rest of them have been in a box in right. the closet since I did the review. These are the exact same bottles. This is the exact That's same awesome. lineup that we had three years ago. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. So, we're going to do them. We're going to try to guess what they are and yeah. we'll say what one is our favorite as we go along yeah i and you know what this gives people an opportunity to like see what we truly think about them no bias no bullshit sure this is this is the real i mean what not that there was at all when you did them but it is what it is right like when we and this i get this comment a lot actually especially when i get whiskey for free they're like oh i can't believe your, your review anymore you got that for free. You're mm -hmm. obviously going to boost the mark. I'm like, and I, I reply, you have no idea how many whiskeys I haven't reviewed that I got for free because I actually feel bad to give them a bad mark. Right. But I'm, and I don't give any, like, I don't review very much under 80%. Yeah. We, we also have to motivate ourselves to do a review. And it sucks to do a review of something that's not good. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that we both get motivated by reviewing stuff that we're excited about. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not going to. There's stuff that's literally stuffed away in a cabinet that I got for free, never reviewed, because I knew I wasn't going to give it a very good mark. There's no point in bashing the brand. You're just going to upset the people that actually enjoy that whiskey, I find. Like, how many people are like, are you crazy? This is the best stuff ever. And you just hurt their feelings for no reason. And, and like, I, yeah. I get it. I, and I understand why people would do those reviews. I just, there's only so much time in a day. So if I'm going to pick a review to do, I'm going to do something I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my, like, mentality with, like, being sent bottles or whatever, which never happens anymore, by the way. No one ever sends me anything. <laughs> there was one review where I got sent a bottle and, you know, gave a brutally honest opinion of it. Yeah. And since then, uh, yeah, reps haven't really reached out to me. We got we got the Bimber stuff that we got to still review. That's true. Right? The Bimber yeah, stuff, true. the Apogee. Yeah, I mean, like, if you want to send me a bottle, I will review it. But, like, you better be sending me something that you know that I will like or else you're not going to get a good review on the channel yeah, exactly you i know? mean at the end of the day our job is to be honest and we've talked about it a million times before and i'll just reiterate the fact that i'm not going to give something that i don't think is very good a good mark because it bothers me way more that there's people out there spending their hard-earned cash on that bottle based on my recommendation that are not going to like that bottle and be upset with that purchase than upsetting the person producing that bottle yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather upset that guy yeah. than the guy that went out, spent his hard-earned hard cash on that bottle, and was disappointed. Right. So, all day I'm in favor of the buyer, not the seller. For sure. Um, if you're listening to us and not watching, and you hear crickets, we are outside tonight. It's yeah. actually a beautiful night. It's not blistering hot. This yeah. summer, the past, like, couple weeks have been insanely hot, where it hasn't gotten cool at night at all yeah, ever no, no it was really hot for a good like week and a half stretch there and like we're talking temperatures you know 35 to 40 degrees with humidity yep for our american friends that's like in the 90s, in the high, 90s. it's like high, high it's, yeah it's low to high 90s yeah uh, yeah with humidity yeah exactly with and humidity. at night it wasn't really dropping down past like you know 25 26 with humidity like it's crazy it was crazy Insane. it was it was too hot i think that's why i'm wearing a sweater tonight because like you've been acclimatized <laughs> yeah right my body's got to come down from <laughs> being ridiculously hot for the so last. we got seven bottles in front of us um red black double black green the gold the nas gold mm-hmm the Johnny Walker 18, which is the replacement of, from the Platinum and the Blue Label. Right. Everything's at 40% except for the green, which is 43. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get at it. We're going to go through. We're going to try these. Are you starting from, well, I guess. You're I don't know. They're all just place. random. Yeah. Um, trying them completely blind. It's good. The nose is going to be hard out here. That's true. We are outside. So the nose We're challenging hard. ourselves even more than we had this to. This is a great challenge. Yeah. Right? Outside drinking, you don't really get much of a nose. But we'll see what we can do. Um, I'll go through some of these comments. Because, like, I, we talked about the themes of the comments on the video. Um, one, I had to defend myself that I wasn't drunk. Um, <laughs> a lot of people didn't realize that I was just taking one sip from each whiskey that I had kind of gone through and done notes beforehand, right? That's what I do right. with every review. I drink the whiskey lots of times and write notes. And then kind of the, the, the video itself is more of, like, a presentation of what I think. 
Um, yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that in the review, yeah, it does matter a little bit, like what you, what you think in that moment. But mm. the review's already been like the mark has already been given prior. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Whatever that first one was, I liked. Okay, that was pretty nice. Um, so let's just, I'll throw out a comment about how drunk I was. This person <laughs> um, says. Alcohol, alcohol, alcoholism level one with about tw- fifteen zeros after it. So what? What is that? Is what's what's past a trillion? Uh, this guy is just. It's like ten. It's like ten thousand trillion. Yeah, that's what level of alcoholism I'm at. There's a uh, septillion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I forget what the number. Quintillion. Insane, like insane. I get that comment all the time, though. Not all the time, but on particular videos, I get it the most. Actually, the ones that I'm, I happen to be like ridiculously tired. That's what I told my wife. She's like, the kids are sleeping. Why don't you go do a review now? I'm like, because every time I do a review when I'm tired, everybody in the comment section says I'm drunk. <laughs> so I'm done doing that. So yeah, that's, that's happened many times before. Um, another theme that I got a lot was my tasting notes. People were just like, you know, how are you getting these tasting notes? There's no pie crust in the whiskey. This person says, I've drank them all and have never thought to myself, mm, I'm getting orchard fruit, figs, vanilla, floral, gym socks, or any other BS flavor. They all taste similar <laughs> to me. These people get so rattled. That's what I find. They like, get dude. so rattled, man. Like, it's like, sometimes I'm just like, you know, I'm just very nice and be like, oh, you know, it's just like, what do you taste when you when you try it? Or like, do you get something sweet? Or, <laughs> <laughs> but like, some people are just such assholes, and they're like, go fuck yourself. Like, what you're saying is bullshit. I'm like, okay, well, why don't you just go to Johnny Walker's like official website yeah. and read their tasting notes, and then call them fucking idiots for saying that. Yeah. They, there's there's vanilla taste and chocolate and whatever else. But like, at the end of the day, it's it's not like we're actually getting like, if you take a bite into a cake or you take a bite into a piece of chocolate, like those full robust notes of like that dessert, you know, like we're getting subtle, like maybe 3% of the aftertaste of what all those things would taste like. It's not necessarily... Like this is where I think the confusion comes from, is they think that if you they take a sip of Johnny Walker Blue, they're gonna get like vanilla cake. Right. No, if you take a bite into a vanilla cake, you're gonna spit that Johnny Walker Blue out because that's so sweet, so mm-hmm. like magnified. Yeah, we're talking at like a micro level of like these tastes, very small percentage of. Like something that's reminiscent of. Yes. But, and that, I think that's where the confusion comes in. Like, uh, to a person that's not a whiskey fan, they don't get, like, how do you get, how do you get caramel? How do you get chocolate? Mm-hmm. Well, it's not actually like taking a bite into a chocolate bar mm-hmm. or taking a bite into a piece of cake or pie. It's, it's like the most minute of that flavor. Right. And it's just reminiscent of that flavor. Yes. Right? And I think that's a big, misconception yeah i mean sometimes i'm really nice about it this point this person um said how do they infuse pie crust into the whiskey do they just mix it in that's a prime example and at what stage and i just cleverly was just like it's mixed in during distilling (laughs) 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 so just like at that point i was just like i've had enough i'm like i'm enough guys enough and it, 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 it's it's also when they catch you. Sometimes they'll catch you in a good mood. You're like, yeah, you know, I'll laugh at this and, yeah. and move on. But there's days where they catch you, like, in a bad mood or whatever. Yeah, and I just, like, go off. Um, definitely don't back down from, like, snarky comments. But, like, some people were really, really shocked about the chill for, uh, the natural color. Because in the video, I'm like, all of these are artificially colored. I'm not even going to bother talking about color right the whiskey yeah they all look the same for a reason and they're like what they're like no freaking way (laughs) uh this one this comment was great this person says artificially colored 
pretty sure whiskey gets its color from the barrel lol it's and this is supposed to be a whiskey channel oh my gosh Dude, like, don't you love when people speak like matter of factly and yeah. they're like completely wrong yeah i know it's so great it's the best but i mean most of the time i'm i just kindly respond to, like yeah it's like a common thing in whiskeys especially for blends they they add what's called e150 caramel colorant and we know this because some countries like germany for example um it's by law they have to disclose if they're adding that into food products and, and beverages like that so right. you'll see on uh german labels it will say like artificially colored or something like that so that's how we that's how we know for sure mm. um but it's quite obvious all right i'm ready man i'm ready <laughs> You know how like it's been a theme on this channel that I've been drinking super fast. Yeah. You're not getting that tonight with these. No, I'm not chugging down Johnny Walker right now. I think I. I but you think tried them all already. I bet you I nailed these. Okay. Okay. What are the what's the over under if I actually nailed the order of this? I think. Oh, I mean, mathematically, just getting it right without knowing anything. Yeah, like I, like I said, the only two that I've purchased here are one and two, mm -hmm. the double black and the fifteen green. That's got to be red. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think some of them will be pretty easy. Like, the red is obviously the most youngest tasting the terrible, whiskey. The most terrible one. Like, it tastes very young. I think the green is the one that's going to taste like a single malt. I think that one will have the most malty characteristic to yeah. it. I mean, it would make I sense. I think I nailed that. If I'm wrong about that, I'd be pretty pissed off. Mm -hmm. um, you're still going. Yeah, I haven't tried all of these yet. I'm going to say that my favorite is between what I think the 18 uh, gold and the 15 green. And I know which one th those are in my order. So sh can I pass those to you and we'll start to reveal mine? I feel like we should start to reveal like one at a time because you're still working on yours. Yeah, I got a lot to go through here. Yeah. So <clears throat> my favorite are these two. Okay. Yeah, we're not really getting much of a nose out here, are we? Okay, so for those of you that uh, are watching and obviously can't, or listening anyway, I'm going to verbally say what happened here. So Jeremy labeled my cups one to seven and poured accordingly. Mm -hmm. One being the red, right. seven being the blue. Yeah. I did the same for him. So now we're trying to line them up based on what we think they are, blindly. Um, and then more importantly, we're going to give our favorites. So I believe that the two that I like the most, I, I still lean more toward the, the 15 green because it's got the most single malt multi kind of characteristic, which I enjoy. And if I'm wrong, then great. Then I found a new Johnny Walker that I, that I enjoy, but I believe it's this one right here. So this would be one, two, three, four. Yeah. So you can... Do the reveal for me if you like. Okay, you want to see what this one was? I think that's the 15 green. This is, I want to say four. Yeah. Is so that I'm right. four? So I'm right. Is that four? That's a four. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, that's a four. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm right about that, and that's my favorite. Nice. Okay, so I'll I'll uh, give myself a little feather in my cap. And the way I thought this was one, and then, oh, sorry, and then I thought this was the 18 green, which I've never tried before, to be honest, uh, which would be six. That looks like a six to me. They should pay me to do this. <laughs> I should be getting paid to do this. Right? Okay. Uh, so then these are the ones that I don't like, which I think this is the red or the double black here. Okay, so it was the double black. So I was wrong about that. I thought it was the red. I put it in order of the red, and then this would have to be the red or double. Oh, no, wow. This is, this is five. Wow, there you go. Five so is the gold. The gold. So the gold, the gold is my second least favorite, and that's... Uh, watch the red be, like, way up here in the blue section. Okay, so then... I think when I did the review, I was like, the gold is a pass. It's a pass. It's a pass. I don't like it. Yeah. It's, okay, I think that's the 18. Um, okay, so three I nailed, which was the, the double black. So I got the double black, correct. I got the... Green, correct. Nice. So three. Nice, nice. Just to show you. That's three. All right. Uh, again, 
four was the green, which I got correct. Um, I'm gonna be wrong here, which I thought was the gold. Maybe this is the red. Yeah, it is. It's the red, one. Wow. So I flipped the red and the... So you this is not... the red and the gold? <laughs> this is not in order of my what I like though, right? This is in order of what I thought it was. Okay. So remember, I, I like the green best. So, so far I've been wrong three times and right three times, well, which means that I've actually been right um, four times because I predicted this last one on the end to be the blue and that's what it is. Number seven. Seven. So I'm f four, f four out of seven, correct. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Pretty I'm, impressive, yeah. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with like, that. I'm having a hard time picking up the Pete and the double black. That's what, that was the, that was, okay, and for those of you that don't know, the double black is, I guess, the most peated out of all of these, mm -hmm. right? Or it's supposed to be. So that was, for me, the indication that that was, um, and I'm also having a hard time picking between the black, like the 12-year-old black, and the gold. Like, I know that gold's not that good. Mm. The blue's just okay for me. It's too light. There's something, it feels like I'm, like, it leaves me wanting. The finish on the blue is not that long. It's, the mouth feels great, but honestly, like, the finish is, is instant. It's, like, it's so short. Mm-hmm. I'm happy with that result. Actually, the 18, the 18 gold is much better than the regular gold. Um, yeah, the 18, the, I mean, the 18 was the one that I thought was the best. That's the one that you said was the best in your video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that was the one that would be like, that's the one if you're going to spend the money to buy it. Yeah. And it, for me, it was between the 18 gold and the 15, but I like lean towards the 15 because of the multi characteristic of it. I, I think, to be so honest with you, got more it, the one that I would choose third is the double black. I prefer the double black to the rest of the line after the 18 gold. So I would do 15 green, 18 yeah. gold, double black, then blue, then black, then red. And I would, like, completely skip. I think for me, like, the double black is a great buy because, yeah. like, it's not expensive. Mm -mm. You get great smoky characteristics out of it. 43%, right? So you get a little bit extra uh, I think ABV? it's 40. Is it 40? 40, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Everything's 40 except for the, the, the green. The green. Um, yeah, like, it's not expensive. No. Like, you can find this bottle in the U.S. for 25 bucks. Yeah. And, you know, younger peated whiskey drinks well a lot of times. So it's like, it just works, you know? Yeah. For me, all day, every day, I, I'm buying that that green at 80 bucks. The green is just, for me, the best at 80 bucks. Yeah, and there's also different versions of the green. Right. Like, it's changed so many times. What's cool it's is... It's been discontinued for a little bit, came yep. back. Yep. A lot of times, they'll list the distilleries that are blended into that mm -hmm. uh, blended malt. It's the only one that's a blended malt. I think I said that already, but uh, they're taking... Klein Leash, Kalila, uh, Talisker, some really good distilleries and blending it into that 15. And they all have to be 15 years old, which is kind of cool, right? You're getting a little taste of all these distilleries from Diageo in one. Mm -hmm. Which, honestly, like, say what you want about Diageo. In the last few years, they've done some really cool things with that Cash Strength series. Special releases have been pretty solid. Great. They're uh, bottling stuff at... Cash strength, cash strength, which is everybody, everybody's been asking for. Yeah, and you know what? For a big conglomerate, they really don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. They have their Johnny Walker line that's selling a like a ridiculous amount of bottles every year. They have the Crown Royal line that's selling a ridiculous amount of bottles every year. And I mean, they don't have to appease anybody. Yeah, but they're doing it. Yeah, which is cool. I think. Sure. I mean, they should because of course they should, but. You know the way greed works. Like, I they know, don't, they but don't like, have to. <laughs> you want to have some kind of like reputation and legacy, and not yeah. just be known as the people who put out forty percent ABV Johnny Walker that's just blended down to nothingness. I mean, there's a company that comes to mind that does exactly that on a regular basis. Yeah, that's just 
catering to the masses and the suits. What, McAllen? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, yeah. McAllen's <clears throat> taking his reputation and has just poured water over it, you know? Uh, literally, literally and metaphorically. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So it's it's sad. Let's get through some of these. Oh, are you gonna you're gonna give us your yeah? Favorite? You know, I I'm, let's just go with it. I yeah. don't know how confident I am in these, but let's let's see what I did. So that is number. What is that? I can't read any of your rating. <laughs> these are all my rating. <laughs> um, what is that for real? That's a three. That's a three. That's the Johnny Walker black, double black. Okay, so I thought that was the red. Okay. So that was completely fucking wrong. This one is three. Okay, sorry. So that's not a three then. Wait, let me see. Well, we're going to deduct this. To, okay, this is three. So this is the Johnny Walker double black. Okay, so I thought that was black. So you thought that was black. So you thought the first one is still unknown. Let's let's move on. I think I, that could be a five. Let me okay. see this one. <laughs> what does this one say? This one says seven. So this is the blue. What did you think that was? So blue I thought was black so the blue you thought was double black you mean yes the blue you thought was double black so wait which one was your favorite of these that you drank over i here? thought it was this one you thought it was that one yeah which is five five so you're here the gold which is the one i hate the most which is the one you hated originally <laughs> <laughs> wait did i put these in reverse order here let me see now i'm confused you could have put them in reverse order yeah, this is five for sure. Okay, I this is six, over that. which I thought was the green, which but is it's actually one. eighteen. Yeah, and then this one is two. Two, is which that a is two? yeah, which is the black, which I thought was this one. Which you thought? Well, okay, yeah, that which makes sense. I thought sense. was the that's yeah, that one was drinking pretty poorly actually. So I got none of them right. So, <laughs> what's this one here? That's the blue, I guess, the one they finished. Oh, this one. That's the so I did have them in the reverse order. So sorry. I did put them in reverse order. Okay, so this is one. So this is red. Right. Okay. So red, you so got sorry, right. Sorry, I put them in the order that of this. Yeah. So red, you got right. Right. So I went red, and then I went number five. So that's what you thought was the black. Right. Okay. Then the next. Then one I is went two, two, which was the double black. Which I thought was green. Which so, I thought was this, right? Okay. Yeah. And then I went six. Which was the green. So that's you. Th so this is six. This is All right. Okay. So I thought I it. thought the eighteen was the green. Right. Then I went seven. Which is the which blue. I don't know why I put that there. Then I went three. Which is the double black. And then I went. What is that? That's five. That's five. The green. Green. So, so I thought green was blue. Right. I thought, <laughs> I thought, yeah, I mean, all completely Wait, four, all over four. the place. You, four. That was four that you picked okay. up. Yeah, that was green. Yeah. So, the, so you you favored the green then right. by putting it in this order, yeah, essentially. Yeah, so I thought my favorite one was number five. Number five? No, sorry, sorry, sorry. This one I thought was my favorite. Okay, which was... Three. Three, which is the double black. Okay. So we're, I mean, I thought these two were the best as well. Yeah. Blindly. So you got, how many did you get right? One? One. I got the red. <laughs> that was it. That's okay. That was it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess like easily confused thinking that, you know, the 18 is the, is the 15 and, you know, the, the black is the gold. And right. Dude, honestly, this is really hard to do. To line these up blind and guess which ones are which based on like the only my like my subtle knowledge of these like very limited knowledge of what's inside these kind of guided me I knew that these two repeated yeah right the most yeah I knew that this the, is gonna be the, the most the, malty and the red had pee right the other ones don't really have that much pee no. Right, like I would say, like these three don't really have peat notes in them, not hardly at all. At all. Like not they at do all. a little bit, a maybe. touch, but but it, very, very. The nice. reason why I knew the blue right off the hop is because it it drinks like water. Yeah. So like, it yeah, it drinks so thin. Yeah. So people, so, thin. so people love it because it's like I'm not drinking whiskey. And like you drink this, 
regular blue label and then try the cast rank blue and you'll think this tastes even more like water oh, of course the, the cast rank blue is delicious yeah i love the the cast rank blue yeah. i think it's great yeah um but yeah and this one you get the multi-characteristic for sure this one you get the peat for sure mm -hmm. I, honestly i really like these i think i think if you're looking at this video an an easy takeaway is save some money and just buy the double black and the gold. I mean, and the green. Yeah. Save some money, buy the double black, double black, gold. Again, the double black and the green, and you're good. I think so. I think those are the buys. I mean, we should try some older Johnny Walker. Well, we, we, what have, we have it, do we not? What we have here is a bottle of Johnny Walker Red from the 1970s. I know from personal experience that I've had some Johnny Walker Black Label 12 year old from like the early 2000s. Yeah. And it's insanely shocking how different it is than the stuff bottled today. Like night and, night and day difference. This one I reviewed before. A and lot you of people, felt it was better? A lot of people talk about old Johnny Walkers and like even the Red Label being just so much different than stuff they bottled today. Distilleries used, amount of, you know, single malt used, all different. This is like way different than anything we've had tonight. It's a little more peated, I yeah. think, right? And it's got like this more savory note to it. And it's more, there's more depth and complexity in this than a lot of the stuff that's in front of us right now. So still a bottle that Oh, sorry. This is bottled at uh, eighty-three point four percent. It's eighty-six point eight proof. Eighty-six, so forty-three point four. Forty-three point four percent. It right. it drinks way older than everything we just tried. Right. Um, this is a half gallon bottle. That's I bought this at auction. That's a cool bottle. Because like it wasn't expensive. Um, What'd that cost? I think it cost about a hundred bucks. That's a great buy. Right. That, for a half gallon? There was no increase in price on that. Right? It, no one made a profit on this. I mean, maybe they did when they bought it in what, what year? 1970? Yeah, it's, this is bottled in the 70s at some time. That's pretty cool. That's a great bottle. That's a fantastic whiskey, actually. It's not bad, right? I don't mind that at all. I, I bet you, I would bet good money that there's old whiskey in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's why, like, people buy up old Johnny Walkers at auction. Because, like, they actually made interesting, complex blends back in the day. If you gave this to somebody blind, there is no way in hell they would guess that that's Johnny Walker. I Yeah, I don't think so. Because, like, well, there's a lot of caramel I get in this. Like, it's a really heavy in caramel. But what's blended into this? So that... I mean, what are the grain? Have you ever looked into the grains blended in their like blends? No, I assume it's a lot of like malted and unmalted, unmalted barley, barley maybe corn, a little bit of corn. Yeah, I wonder. I really do wonder because it's it's unlike any Canadian blend that we'll, we'll ever try. It's unlike any American blend that we've ever tried. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very very distinctly Scottish. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, when you have a Chivas, I probably said that wrong. I, 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 Chivas? 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 Chivas. Um, those are, those taste like scotch. Like, you can tell you're drinking scotch. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, the Chivas, yeah. that's a, that's a, that's a Spanish dude that went, or French dude that went to Scotland and started his own distillery. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm wondering. Are you going to make me <laughs> look, that, look up? that up and put it's it It's going to be showing up oh, right over here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> mm -mm. Just kidding. Um, I like that a lot. That's really good. Yeah, it's not bad, right? A lot better than... Uh, Pretty much everything here, I would still maybe take... Actually, I don't know. I might take this over the green. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that this has a little bit more depth than the stuff we were drinking earlier, you know? 
for the record, we poured like a half ounce in each of these glasses. Because like someone's going to ask, oh, these guys are drunk or, you know. Yeah, like how much total get... whiskey have we had so far? Maybe like two ounces. Two and a half ounces max? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. one like stiff cocktail at a bar. Yeah, exactly. One drink. I, I didn't finish any of these and we poured uh, less than a half ounce in each of them. Yeah, and only one of mine has been finished. Yeah, some of them are like full. <laughs> yeah, and they will be pouring out. <laughs> and they'll be like, I'm gonna blend them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blend oh, the blend. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Right. Um, let's quickly talk about what's happening in Whiskey Tube because one of <laughs> Ralphie came out with a video Great very video. recently. <laughs> it's hilarious. And he was talking about chill, chill filtration in right. whiskey, and he had a proper rant. He went off. One of the most passionate <laughs> videos I've seen from him in a while. Like in he, a while. He, 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 he has this, what I think is like he gets this buildup of, you know, someone who is OG in the whiskey yeah. world. He knows what whiskey used to taste like, and he's just seeing it have potential but just being stripped of what it could be. And he destroyed this Ben Romick 10 and he went off on Ben Romick. There's, and like, so there's moments where I feel like we're like, I feel like Ralphie's little brother sometimes. And like every once in a while I'll say something and then I'll find it in a video, like later on down the road. And he's like, <laughs> just right. slapping me in the face. He's like, yeah. you know what, Rob, shut up. <laughs> he's like, so go ahead, finish, finish this Ben Romick. So he reviews Ben Romick 10 year old, bottle at 43%. Uh, chill filtered because it doesn't say non chill filtered in right. Ralphie's. Like, if you're getting something at 40 or 43, it's chill filtered. You're, it's chill filtered. And he is just like, this whiskey could have so much potential. I like the profile, it's good whiskey. Yeah. But they've just destroyed the mouthfeel of it, they've just destroyed the viscosity. Yep. It's not there, it should be. Mm -hmm. And it would just make this thing epically better. But they're fucking themselves. Yeah, and, and we've tried some excellent Ben Romick. I like Ben Romick. I like Ben Romick a lot. <clears throat> but I don't but he's the, right. I don't have the 10-year-old. He's right about the stuff that's bottled at 43 and low. And you know what? They know. They know. They're not They're not dumb. They, they, we're talking about, like, a, a company that's like wi has high whiskey savvy. Yeah. They also own Gordon McPhail. Yeah. Right, they're not messing around, and it's it's probably harder to do what Ben Romick and Glenn, Gordon McPhail do than probably anybody else because Gordon McPhail has to choose from a ridiculous amount of casks to figure out what they're releasing on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Right now, I trust the people at Gordon McPhail probably more than eighty percent of the distilleries, if not higher than that. Yeah, you know, I should say way higher than that, ninety percent of the distilleries because. Mm -hmm. They've been in the game forever, and they're dealing with everybody's whiskey, so they know what's good and what's not. Like, if you're only tasting your whiskey day in, day out, you have an, a good idea of what should taste good, what whatever, but that's within the profile of your own whiskey. Gordon McPhail has an idea of what's good within the profile of hundreds of different distilleries, yeah. right? So I trust them more than a lot of companies, more than the majority of companies and Ralphie's right. I'm not disagreeing with what he's saying, but I, I still, and I, and I know he was like referring back to something that I've said on the channel in the past, which was, I believe that Ben Romick is the spring bank of space side. Yeah. Right. Um, and he mentions something like that in an Instagram tweet or Instagram post. Um, yeah. I don't think he, does he say it in the actual rant? He says that Ben Romick could be the spring bank of the North. Right. If it bottled its core range and everything at a 46 plus. And I'm glad he did it because yeah. you know what? Maybe it'll motivate them to do that because we've had that. How old was that uh, sherry cast? That we, the peated sherry it was about ten. nine or 10. Yeah. About around that, that age. And I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. And it was bottled at a little bit of a higher ABV. Then we've had cast strength stuff from them that's phenomenal. Cast strength, 18-year-old, 100% ex-bourbon. Yeah. It was so good. Amazing, right? So, so, so we know what they're capable of. So here's the thing about Ralphie's rant, which it was a rant. It was more of a rant than a review, for sure. Um, I agree with 
absolutely everything he said, yeah. except for one thing. Okay. He said that Ben Romick is messing up, and they're not going to be selling their whiskey. That's not true. No, they will sell their whiskey. There's when P, when distilleries bottle at that ABV and they chill filter, they're appealing to markets that want that whiskey presented that way. Yeah. That's why Glendronic has moved to doing that. That's why McAllen sells so much whiskey in certain markets. Yeah. Because that market wants the whiskey that way. So it's like it's a business thing. It's not like I'm appealing to, you know, the one percent or ten percent or however whatever it is yeah. of whiskey anoraks that want presentation the way that Springbank does it. I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a second here and say that as as much as I agree the the, the whiskey lover in me agrees with everything that Ralphie's saying. Mm-hmm. But the whiskey lover in me also does not want Ben Romick to go down the road that Springbank went. Because I don't want Ben Romick to not be available anymore. Yeah. So if they change all their age stated whiskey to 46% or higher, mm-hmm. until filter, no added color, you're never going to see it on the shelf anymore. Yeah. It's gone. The 10 going to be gone. The cast strength going to be gone. The... 21's gone, the 15's gone, everything's gonna be gone. So what do we what do we achieve here? <laughs> That's you know a good what I mean? Point. So like Alberta yeah. right now is able to bring in Ben Romick casks once in a while. Yeah. I'd rather be able to just cherry pick those once in a while. Mm-hmm. You know what the core range, every once in a while they'll throw us a bone and they'll give us something a little higher ABV, like that cherry, uh, that peated cherry, or you know, once in a while we'll get the cast strength 10 or other types of cash strength, whatever. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. okay with that because you know what? The Springbank formula is not working for the whiskey fan anymore. Yeah. Because how many Springbanks did you get this year? Zero. I got... I mean, I got the society bottling, but that's... You got the society bottling. Yeah. I got the society uh, society bottling and the 15-year-old that's staring at us over here. Yeah. That's it. Right. Right? Yeah. So... I, I don't want Ben Romick to go down that road because I don't want Ben Romick to be impossible to get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Glen, Glen, Glen Alecky is already impossible to get. Springbank is already impossible to get. Why do I want that to happen to Ben Romick as mm-hmm. well? Yeah. We're, we need these companies to kind of appeal to multiple facets just yeah. maybe to stay under the radar a little bit. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's too late. Maybe Ralphie's saying that they're the next Springbank or they could be anyway, and us saying that they're the next spring bank, or they could be anyway. Yeah. Maybe it's already too late, but I feel like I kind of just want them for myself. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want them to do that. I Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And, like, I, I can't fault a business for putting a product in a market that sells, yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean... And like, if it doesn't sell, that's a different thing. I would be really interested to see what Springbank sales are in the Asian market. Yeah. What percentage of them sell in that market? Like, it'd be really interesting to see if they appeal to that market or not. They probably That would be more telling, I think. (laughs) Yeah. Because, like, I feel like they don't maybe have the same percentage of their sales like McAllen does, like, you know, Glendronic hopes to have in those markets. Right. By presenting a whiskey that drinks... Like this whiskey, right? That's chill filter. Yeah. That like you put a nice cube in it, it doesn't turn cloudy. It's very you know, there's no viscosity or mouthfeel or complexity. It's just smooth, right? right? That's right. The, the key word. We need to make whiskey that drinks smooth right. and sell it in this market, and it will sell. Yeah. The, this the, the, let's get this right. The twenty one is great. It's forty three percent, but it's great. It's meant to appeal to a mass market yeah. right i bet you it does well in the asian market i bet you it does well in the suit market you yeah. know what i mean yeah. um do i love that no we've talked about mccallan i i i've lost a lot of respect for mccallan but at the end of the day they're always going to sell a trillion bottles a year because that's who they are mm-hmm. um i don't think Springbank will ever even try to be in that category. Like yeah. they've never they've never tried and they're selling out anyway. You know what I mean? They're selling out their 10, they're selling out their 15, they're selling out their, their all their age statement whiskeys they're selling out. 
Spring Bank is doing a very, very smart thing with the way that they market or don't market their whiskey. Right. Because that distillery could produce more whiskey. Right. It has the capability to produce more whiskey, and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. One, because I don't think they want to buy more casts that aren't up to snuff, right. which is fine, absolutely. Exactly. And two, they want to keep demand low. Sorry, they want to keep supply low, yeah. demand high, high, and that that is that scarcity scarce sorry scarcity marketing yeah. that just works. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. It's like their product's always going to be in high demand. Why? Because they're not saturating the market with lots of stuff. Right. The only thing I'll I'll say about Springbank is they tend to. They, they have their finger on the market when it comes to, like, what casks should we use this year? We're going to use a rum cask because that seems to be really popular. We're going to use port because that seems to be really popular. Yeah. Now we're going to make our whiskeys dark because that seems to be really popular. Right. Um, but I will say, dare I say, in the last couple of years, Springbank has gone downhill in a little way. Like, in a, in a, since 2019... Have you had a wow spring bank? Other than the society releases. Um, Other, so, I shouldn't say since 2019. Because we both love the local barley 10. I think that was a 2020 release. The local barley 10. Yeah. Yes. And I haven't really tried too much 2022 stuff. 2021, 2022. The, so, the Kilkirans, the Longrows, the Hazelburn, the spring banks... Yeah. Every one that I've tried so far has just been okay. Maybe yeah. a little too sulfured or maybe a little bit, I don't know, too harsh, too, I, I don't know. Mm. I haven't been create, like obsessed with a, a spring bank other than that 28 that we tried, which was phenomenal. Spring bank for our like relatively short time of drinking that distillery. I feel like... 2019 was like an incredible year it was a great year their entire year. core range that we tried was yep. phenomenal yeah. like really really good i think it spilled into 2020 but after that i like the last two years i think so again i have well you your opinion on the 18 year old from 2021 wasn't the best right? no i, I wasn't but yeah. then again i i wasn't a big fan of any of the 18 year olds that i've had other than the one which from 2019 yeah so the 2017 I didn't love very much. The 2018 I didn't love. The 2020, the 2021 I didn't love. The 2019 was great. The one that we tried. I think it had a little bit of a port influence in it. Um, one more thing we should do before we wrap up this Johnny Walker tasting. A good friend of the channel gave us a sample of the Johnny Walker Platinum 18-year-old. This was the one that was been discontinued and replaced by the 18. Essentially, I think what happened was is that the gold label used to be 18. Mm -hmm. They've taken that and made it the new 18, and they made it an NAS gold and discontinued the platinum. Okay. Here's a sample All right. of the platinum. I just want to try it real quick just to see is there that much of a difference between essentially the old platinum 18 and the new gold 18. So we tried the old bottling, which we thought was excellent. Or at least, I mean, I thought it was excellent. We tried a bunch of different... Uh, that is better. It is better? That That is better than the new 18, I think. The old Platinum is better. What do you think? Yeah, it's good. I like it. I like the 18 from... I like this one as well. I think they're both pretty good. I wonder if the blend is identical. You know what would have really wrapped this up nicely is the um, the 21XR. Yeah, or a Ghost and Rare, or any of the other Johnny Walkers that are... So, yeah, so the Ghost and Rares are incredible, yeah. according to a lot of people. I've actually... I don't know if I've tried one. Or maybe one. Yeah, yeah I think Jasper one. had one that was really good. It we had tried the Brora, one. It had Brora in it, right? That's right, the Brora Ghost Did and it have Rare. Brora in it, or there was one that There's had... There's a Port Ellen one as well. Port Ellen. I can't remember what one I tried. I think it was the Brora one. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Um, I think it's as good as the the other 18-year-old. Maybe a little bit better. I think the new 18 has more, like, maybe orchard fruit notes. And this one, maybe, like, some more sherry whiskey. I was going to say there's more sherry in, in that platinum. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I feel it. Like, yeah. 
definitely. Who was the friend that uh, sent this over? I'll put his uh, name up. Um, oh, okay, the whiskey uh, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know him, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, well, I didn't do very good on the blind tasting, but uh, you did pretty well. I mean, this is becoming a trend. <laughs> <laughs> um, either way, though, I think, like, the Johnny Walker line, um, you know, it's not really what we're looking to purchase no, nowadays. But there's, the, when I see Johnny Walker black or double black on a shelf at a wedding or, mm -hmm. you know, one of those kind of bars... I'm happy because yeah. at least I know there's something I could drink. You know what right. I mean? Right. It's not like just no scotch at all. Right. right. It's like like the bar rail whis whiskey is like, you know, CC, right? Yeah. Or it's when I whatever. See, it's it's just... It's, personally, when I see Johnny Walker Black or, or well, Johnny Walker see, Double if Black. If you see Johnny Walker Black, you know that you can have a, a neat Exactly. Sip, Thank you. Right? Yes, that's what I mean. So yeah. like... And, and and usually it's side by side with the in Ontario anyway it's side by side with the Glenmorne G10 mm -hmm. and the Glenfiddich 12. Those are your your Scotch options. I'll go with the Johnny Walker Black. Yeah, I prefer I, a little bit of peat. It brings a little bit more substance to the table. Yeah, than yeah. the other two. And let us know in the comments down below what you prefer from the Johnny Walker range. Um, what's your best value? And if money if money was not an option. Would you go with the Ghost and Rare? Would you go with like some of the crazy special edition Johnny Walkers that are out there now? There's a lot. There is an absolute lot of Johnny Walker out there. If of all the Johnny Walkers, not like not excluding stuff that's not on this table, what's the one that you would recommend people to buy right now? Not not on this table. It, it could be on this table or not on this table. My recommendation for anyone is the fifteen. I think if you've never had a Johnny Walker before, yeah. I would buy the 15. Yeah. Because, I mean, in, in Ontario's market, what is it, 100? It's 80. 80? 80 or 85. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. In the U.S., it's better. Yep. And around the world, it's better. Yeah. Um, because I think this one appeals to, a, like, pretty much every drinker yeah. could drink it. Absolutely. I think that if you like smoky, then it's the double black because the double black is cheap. Double check. Yeah. It's in the U.S., twenty six bucks. I've seen it for. It's cheap, man. Yeah. And it's it's a good whiskey for that price. One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so since you said those two, and those were my favorite of the blind, uh, I'm gonna say the Master Blend. I think it's called the one that was like fifty one percent or mm -hmm. about fifty one percent that came out this year. White bottle. Uh, I like that a lot. I thought that was great. Like getting Johnny Walker at a higher ABV. Yeah. It's such a cool experience because you're not used to it. Yeah. And you see what they could be capable capable of if they were a little higher ABV, uh, a little bit more going on with it. They put probably a little bit older whiskey in there as well because it was like a special edition bottle. Sure. And what's the new Johnny Walker 12-year-old they got coming out? It's like a sherry cask or a PX or something, isn't it? I saw that. What we don't that? get a lot of the fancy stuff. Like there was a, a Caribbean 14-year-old or something like that. There was like Mm. There's been they've been playing around was, with a bunch of different age statements and stuff like that. You like people that collect Johnny Walker? They just like their heads must just explode because there's like there's a new release every other day. It seems you know. A better question would be why would you collect Johnny Walker? <laughs> so many people collect it. I know it's true, right? Like so many people collect it. Yeah, it's like it's out of control. I guess it's relatively inexpensive, so you're not going nuts to spend money on bottles, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Johnny Walker, Black Label, Sherry Finish, 12-year-old. That's, that's pretty the one, cool. That's the one I was thinking of. I'd like to try that. I would try it. Yeah. yeah I'm sure it's just bottled at 40 but... Uh, and the, the, the LCBO, LCBO has, has it, for it for less than 70 bucks. 68 95 That's pretty cool. There you go. And what's the ABV? Uh, let me see. Does it say? 68.95. I think I'll have to purchase that just to give it a shot. I'm sure it's 40%. I can't really say. Yeah, it doesn't say. I think it's forty. The likelihood is it's forty. Most likely. Would have been cool if it, if it was, was forty three. If it was forty three, it's not gonna be forty six. Yeah. <laughs> let's get let's get real. It might That's... be forty. It might be forty three. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, 
I think that, you know, Johnny Walker has his time and his place in your whiskey journey. It's something that you probably start with, maybe your first scotch ever. Yeah. It, you, it's one of those things where, like, you should try it to expand your palate, to understand certain whiskeys a little bit better. You should try it. Yeah, and you can try it anywhere, at any bar, at any time. Yeah. Because everyone has at least something yeah there yeah and it's less like jack daniels in the sense like everybody in ontario has a jack daniels drunk story yeah whereas like not too many people have that with johnny walker i don't true that's true so you shouldn't be jaded as much yeah yeah (laughs) um check out my review on this old bottle of uh, johnny walker red from the 1970s it's very it's very interesting to to go back in time and try something like that yeah, we have um, a few archive videos. You have the the classic core range video that if you haven't watched it, then I don't know where you've been in the whiskey world for a while because <laughs> over a, almost 2 million people have watched that's it. That's an right old now. video, man. Yeah. That's an old video. Well, the peak uh, of the channel, I guess. <laughs> it, it's, it's almost four years old because essentially you've been around for almost four years now. That's true, yeah. Um, later on this month, it will be four years for Super Social Club on YouTube. If you're still watching or listening at this time, comment below as to what we should do for the Super Social Club four-year anniversary. Mm. And we're going to do it on a rant. Yeah. Maybe a live rant. Maybe we'll rewatch my early videos and cringe at how bad it was. <laughs> Buddy, my, my early videos were way worse. For let's sure. do it. Let's, maybe we'll do that. Like a head we'll, to head? We'll rewatch our old videos and just cringe about how, uh, you know, not smooth we were. Can we, can we, <laughs> can we show the part where I would walk on, oh, yeah. <laughs> onto the set? Press play, set and walk over. <laughs> That's old school, man. That's like that's Ralphie styles, you that know. Was, like that's, that's where Ralphie. I got the idea. That's like, Ralphie style. You know I like, press play. I sit down. I don't edit anything. It goes right up. That's that's essentially what happened for like a a year and a half. I like that rawness to it. You know, it was it's, almost it's, two it's, years. It's of that. one take. There's no edits. I like that. There was a lot of that. Yeah, in I like the beginning. That. I like that. And My then, favorite thing about your early days is that you would say you're gonna review something next, <laughs> and then never review it. I remember. I, I looked back at so many comments, and that I was see my Jeremy favorite thing. He's like, "What happened to that?" <laughs> Blah blah blah. Right? You're supposed it to review. Goes, like, as your collection grew, it just got pushed back further and further and further, <laughs> and then it never got touched. That still happens. I love me. it. But I, I just don't say it. You anymore. don't say that. Coming up next, I'm going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I really should. Like, and that that just goes to show that like most of what we do is completely unbiased on these channels. We, not most. All of what we do is unbiased because we're literally, like, I'll buy a new bottle. I'm like, eh, I don't really care to review that anymore. I'm going to review this instead. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, exactly. I right? The shiny new toy gets reviewed first, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really much appreciate it. Again, comment down below your Johnny Walker recommendation. If you think it's all shit, let us know. Yeah. But, like, tell us why. Don't just say it's garbage. And if you have a recommendation of a blend that you would maybe think is in this price range of some of these bottles, let us know down below of what you would recommend to people. If it's not Johnny Walker, what are you uh, recommending for uh, for blends? Yeah. And um, if you have been following along all along, you know that every once in a while we do a whiskey after the rant live video, live yeah. show. So that might happen now. Sure. With a cigar, yeah. Actually. And look back at Whiskey in the Sixth channel for that video. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Cheers.